I invite you to stand as you are able and join us for our opening hymn of praise on page 57, O Four Thousand Tongues to Sing. be seated. If you'll join me in our opening prayer. God of all creation, we gather together to worship your holy name. Your love never fails, your grace overflows, and your peace passes all understanding. On this cold morning, Hear our song of praise and crack open our hearts. Rekindle in us the fire of your spirit so that as Pastor Robert leads us in music and Pastor Jasmine proclaims your word, we will hear what you have us hear. Give us the ears to hear you. Give us the courage to act on what we hear. So that as we go into this city, that we may serve you with faithful hearts. And that may, we may sing your song of praise till all heaven and earth can hear us. In your son's holy name we pray. Amen. If you'll stand for our next song printed in your bulletin. As we celebrate Changing Lanes, this sermon series, let this prayer show me your way, O Lord ring in your heart show me your ways that i may walk with you show me your ways i put my hope in you the cry of my heart is to love you more to 
to live with the touch of your hand stronger each day show me your way come on let's sing it show me show me your ways that i may walk with you show me your ways i put my hope in you the cry of my heart is to love you more to live with the touch of your hand stronger each day show me your way the cry the cry of my heart is to love you more to live with the touch of your hand stronger each day Remain standing and join me in the Apostles' Creed found on page 881. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who is conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose from the dead. He ascended into heaven, and it is seated at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Good morning and welcome to Atlanta First United Methodist Church. I'm Jasmine Smothers. I'm the lead pastor here at Atlanta First and it is my joy and honor to welcome you to worship today. Here at Atlanta First, we exist to worship God, to serve people, to grow together, and to engage the city of Atlanta. And we want to invite you to join us in this movement to do so. So please don't forget to take out the connect cards that are located in your bulletins. Fill them out. Let us know that you're here. Flip them over. Let us know how you would like to engage in the life of this congregation and put them in the offering plates when they pass by. To our visitors and friends, I want to extend a special welcome to you. I know we have some friends from the Church of the Resurrection in Kansas City um, here with us today, and we're thrilled that you're worshiping with us. And to any others that are visiting the city of Atlanta, please know that you have a family here while you are in the city. Let us know if there's anything we can do to support you while you are here. I want to invite our children down to join us in worship this morning. Oh my goodness, what'd you do? You fell? Oh my goodness, good morning. You got a doll? That's so great, good morning. 
How are you guys doing today? Oh, thank you for your sweet hug, girl. How are you doing today? Good. Did you have a good week? Yes. Yes. Did you go back to school this week? Yes. Yes. How was it? It was good. You had a grand finale. Wow, okay, okay. Well, so today we are having a sermon series called Changing Lanes. How many of you have been in the car with your parents or your grandparents and they moved really quickly? Yes. (laughs) Really? So your mom drove you here? That's awesome. You forgot? Yeah. (laughs) How about you? You same? You've been in the car and back and forth and back and forth? Yeah. You remember? Okay. So fast you screamed? That's awesome. (laughs) That's great. Well, did you know that we have several different kinds of streets when we're driving? Yeah? So they, some of them look different. Well, the street right here, this is what we call Porter Place. It's a one-way street. Does anybody know what that means? No? It means you can only drive this way on Porter Place. You can't drive this way. You have to drive this way, even though some people try sometimes. <laughs> and we have to be really careful when we are on one-way streets to look out for everybody around us because people sometimes on one-way streets, they drive really fast and we scream, ah! and people are trying to cross the street, and all kinds of crazy things happen on one-way streets. <laughs> But do you know what the best thing about driving on a one-way street is? It's going slow. <laughs> yes, going slow. You were scared when your grandpa was driving so fast? <laughs> Help! I'm scared! Help! <laughs> okay. Okay. Well, see, the best thing for me about driving on one-way streets is that I know I don't have to guess which way I'm supposed to be going, right? So just sort of like when you wake up in the morning and it's a school day, you know what you're supposed to do, right? What are you supposed to do? You're supposed to get up and get dressed and get ready for school, right? And be good at school. Well, do you know that God gives us some directions about which way we're supposed to go? Yeah, about which way we're, what we're supposed to do? (laughs) Yeah, to try to keep us out of trouble at school. Do you know what those directions look like? Be nice, be kind, don't go to jail. That's a good one. If you go to jail, sometimes that means you've been very bad. How about you? You have any ideas about what God tells us? And what? If you rob a bank, you go to jail, yeah. (laughs) Yeah, we're not supposed to shoot people. That's a good idea. (laughs) So what God teaches us today is that if we follow the directions, if we follow the directions to be kind and loving, to love everybody, to not get in a lot of trouble and all of that, then, you know what happens? No, I don't. Hi. Hi, you guys. I have no idea. You have no idea what happens? No, no, I can't. I have no idea that they were already That they were coming. You're missing your friends. Yeah. Okay, so when we follow God's instructions, when we follow on our one-way street, what do you think happens? We get a reward. What's that reward? Joy, happiness, and a great, great life with God, right? Okay, so this is a challenge for this week, okay? Everybody listen really carefully. Follow directions. Can you do that? And don't be bad. Yep. 
Okay, don't do that either. <laughs> don't do that either. Okay, let's pray. Anybody want to pray today? You want to pray, Mira? Okay, would you like to pray or would you like me to help you pray? You want to help? You want me to help you? Okay. Say, dear God. Dear God. Thank you for today. Thank you for the day. Thank you for letting us. Thank you for letting us. Come to church. Come to church. And keeping us warm. And keeping us warm. Thank you for loving us. Thank you for, thank you for loving us so much. We love you, Jesus. We love you, Jesus. Amen. Amen. All right, you guys have a great time in Children's Church. I can't wait to hear what you've learned, okay?
Amen. Hallelujah. Let us praise the Lord. Have you come to praise God this morning? Have you come to lift up your hallelujahs and to praise the God who created us and who brought us this far along our way? Friends, it's prayer time. It's a time where we join together and we give our thanksgiving and our praise to our almighty God. We remember those who are not among us this morning. We lift our prayers for the continued healing of Dr. Bob and uh, a flow of Norfesia and Jerry. Uh, we want to thank God that Pastor Robert is back with us this morning um, after he's been ill. Um, we give thanks for uh, the memory of Peek and Francis Riley, who were our historians here at Atlanta First um, for years. And the flowers are dedicated in their memory today. We also want to remember and celebrate the life of Becky Yarborough, who has been on our prayer list, um, a friend of Anthony Williams. She passed away on Friday. Um, after a valiant fight uh, with cancer, and we want to lift her family in prayer. We also want to um, thank God for our bishop today. Today is her birthday, and we want to pray for her and celebrate her life, Bishop Sue Harper Johnson, and also celebrate Sandria Terrell. Where are you, Sandria? She's ushering. She's always working. Um, Sandria is one of our very fine youth, and she was awarded a full scholarship to a summer program at Harvard this summer. So we want to, we're so proud of you. We're so very proud of you. We're going to miss you this summer, but we're going to be cheering you on and supporting you from home. So friends, um, bring your prayer cards to the altar rail this morning or place them in the offering plate as we go to God in prayer. Remember to lift up all of those who are lifted, listed on our prayer list and all of those that are in your hearts and minds and souls this morning. For we know that when we pray, God hears us and things change. Praise him. We praise God this morning. Jesus praise God this morning. We 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 praise Praise Him. of your presence, O oh God. We thank you for allowing us to gather at 360 Peachtree Street one more time so that we might worship and adore you, O oh God. 
For Lord, in the midst of everything that is going on in our world, in the midst of famine and disease and homelessness and illness, oh God, in the midst of mudslides and bomb threats, in the midst of our hatred toward our neighbors, oh God, you are still God and you are God alone and you have promised never to leave us nor forsake us and for this we are exceedingly grateful, oh God. We praise you that you forgive us in spite of ourselves. We praise you that you continue to give us opportunities to worship and adore you, to love our neighbors better than we love ourselves over and over and over again. We thank you for the continued healing of those on our prayer list and of those mentioned today, oh God. We thank you that you continue to heal Norfesia and Dr. Bob and Pastor Robert and Jerry. We thank you for the life of Becky Yarborough. We thank you for the continued healing of Frank and Christian and everybody and Connor and all the Moody's and everyone who's fighting flu and pneumonia and everything that's going around. Oh God, we thank you that you have made us your instruments of peace, your instruments of grace, your instruments of mercy, your instruments of love and of healing. We thank you for allowing us to provide food for those who are hungry, to help clothe those who are naked, to provide shelter for those who are naked, oh God. We pray that in the midst of this very cold season, you will enable us to do our part to keep Atlanta warm, oh God. We pray for our president. We pray for our nation. We pray for our new mayor and our new city council and every leader that we are subject to, oh God. Make them be the leaders that you have called them to be. Make them be leaders who worship and honor you and follow your commands to love, oh God. And give us forgiving hearts. Give us forgiving hearts when we don't get it right and when those around us do not get it right. For you have indeed forgiven us. And we thank you for teaching us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. As those return to their seats, we give thanks that God continues to bless us. And we ask that you give generously as we do strive to keep Atlanta warm this winter. We cannot do anything without your generous gifts. And we thank you for how you give toward the mission of this church and community. If I can help somebody as I pass along, if I can cheer somebody with a word or song. If I can show somebody they are traveling wrong, then my living shall not be in vain. Then my living shall not shall not be 
in vain if I can help somebody as I pass along then my living shall not be in vain if I can do my duty as a Christian ought. If I can bring back beauty to a world abroad. If I can spread love's message that the master taught then my living shall not be in vain then my living shall not be in vain shall not be in vain if we can help just one somebody as we pass along then I God, don't let our living be in vain. Don't allow our living to be in vain. Here we are, the second Sunday in January, and we're piddling along in 2018, and we're entering the second Sunday of our sermon series called Changing Lanes. Last week, we talked about what it would take for all of us to get on the bus together, Ben, and to get over from the slow lane to the HOV lane and to head in one direction together with God. And today, we're going to talk about what it's going to take for us to get on a one-way street and to follow the covenant and commands of God in our life so that we can be the people that God has created us to be. Here's the thing about one-way roads. They're dangerous. One-way roads are dangerous because if you miss the sign... If you miss the sign, if you miss the sign, then you can create or get into a head-on collision. So what does the Word of God have to say about that today? Turn in your bulletins or in your Bibles or electronic devices to Deuteronomy chapter 29. We're going backwards in the text this morning. We started out with Joshua last week and we're going a few chapters back to Deuteronomy 29 before Moses was dead. And in Moses 29, verse 2, the scripture says, Moses summoned all the Israelites and said to them, You have seen with your own eyes everything the Lord did in the land of Egypt to Pharaoh and to all his servants and to his whole country. All the great tests of strength, the miraculous signs, and the amazing wonders. But to this day, the Lord has not given you minds that understand, nor eyes that see, nor ears that hear. For 40 years, I led you through the wilderness. 
Yet your clothes and sandals did not wear out. You ate no bread and drank no wine or other alcoholic drink, but he gave you food so that you would know that he is the Lord your God. And when you came here, King Sion and King Og came out to fight against us, but we defeated them. We took their land and gave it to the tribes of Reuben and Gad and to the half-tribe of Manasseh as their grant of land. Therefore, obey the terms of this covenant so that you will prosper in everything you do. All of you, tribal leaders, elders, officers, all the men of Israel are standing today in the presence of the Lord your God. Your little ones and your wives are with you as well as the foreigners living among you who chop your wood and carry your water. You are standing here today to enter into the covenant of the Lord your God. The Lord is making this covenant, including the curses. By entering into the covenant today, he will establish you as his people and confirm that he is your God, just as he promised you and as he swore to your ancestors, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. But you are not the only ones with whom I am making this covenant with its curses. I am making this covenant both with you who stand here today in the presence of the Lord our God and also with the future generations who are not standing here today. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. Lord, here we are to worship, here we are to bow down, here we are to say that you are indeed our worthy and our holy God. So we've come expecting a word from you, O God. We've come anticipating that you might speak to our hearts and our minds and our souls this day. For Holy Spirit, if you don't do the preaching, there will be no preaching here. So take this, your servant, and hide her behind that old rugged cross so that anything that is said and anything that is done comes straight from you, O God. This is your servant's prayer. In the name of Jesus the Christ, we pray. Amen. In Atlanta, we love our one-way streets, don't we? especially in downtown Atlanta. You see, my dad lived in Atlanta for almost 25 years, and he's been gone from Atlanta for almost 20 years now. And every time he comes back, he says, another one-way street? What's wrong with y'all? And I tease him, and I say, but you live in the nation's capital. It's all one-way streets. What's wrong with you? One-way streets are bossy, aren't they? (laughs) We know that if we could just get up that one-way street the opposite way, that we could get to our destination in half the time. But no, you've got to go all the way around. You see, the Israelites... (laughs) They went all the way around for 40 years. They went all the way around. They went all the way around in circles, wandering in the wilderness because they could not follow the instructions. The Israelites missed the signs. They missed the instructions that if you just follow the one-way sign, then you'll end up in your destination without all the turmoil that you've created because you can't follow the instructions. If you can't say amen, you can say ouch. You see, Moses summoned all the Israelites, not just the leaders. And church, you need to thank the leaders of this congregation. Over 20 of them spent their Saturday in training yesterday so that they can follow the instructions and lead us in the way that we're supposed to go. But Moses summoned all the Israelites, not just the lay leader, Wayne, 
Not just the preacher, not just the trustee chair, not just the assistant pastor, but all the Israelites. He summoned all the people. He said, all of y'all, this is too important for you to hear about later. You need a front row seat for what God is about to do. You see, God knew what came next, and so do you, because you were here last week and you heard that shortly after this, Moses is dead and Joshua has to lead the people into the promised land. Moses knew that it was going to be so important that folks didn't hear it through the grapevine, but that they showed up and they heard the word of God for themselves. You see, God was making a new covenant with them. We made a new covenant with God last week as we renewed our faithful Wesleyan covenant to do what God is calling us to do and to go to work on behalf of the Almighty God. Abraham's covenant is now dead. And Moses, God makes a new covenant with Moses and the Israelites. He says, you've seen what God has done. You've seen what God has done. You have seen God bring you out of slavery. You have seen God feed you when there shouldn't have been any food. You have seen God clothe you when there shouldn't have been any shoes on your feet. You have seen God show up for you over and over and over again, and yet you still miss it. And then peculiarly, Moses blames it on God. (laughs) He says, but God hasn't given you ears to see, eyes to see, or ears to hear. And God has allowed you to miss it. It's not your fault. But don't miss this. God is giving you some new instructions. He is about to deliver you from your past. He is about to deliver you from pain. He's about to deliver you from wilderness. He's about to deliver you from suffering. No more going in circles. It's time to get on the one-way street to the promised land. Forty years, Moses said, I led you through the wilderness, and you had everything you needed. 40 years breaking rules, not obeying God's law to love our neighbors. 40 years killing each other and fighting with each other, acting up on each other. 40 years of worshiping stuff and money. 40 years of worshiping buildings and legacies. 40 years of this and that and tit for tat and who's this and who's got that and who's in charge. 40 years and God was still faithful. Time out. It's time to get on board and follow the rules. We're changing lanes here. No more business as usual. We're getting on the one-way street and we're going God's way to what is next in the life of this church and in, the li- in your life. But here's the best part for me. This covenant isn't only about you. God's not just making the covenant with the people who are sitting on these pews. God's not just making the covenant with the people who are members of this congregation who are not able to be here today. God is not just making this covenant with you, with the leaders of this church right now and with the heads of your families right now. God is not just making this covenant around things that you can see and understand. God is not just making a covenant for right now and right here, but is making it for generations to come. What that means is that when Moses dies, the promise doesn't die. 
When the pillars of the church pass on, the promise doesn't die. When the pillars of your family move along, the promise does not die. God has made a covenant that keeps going and going and going and going and covering and covering and covering and blessing and blessing and blessing and directing and directing and directing. If we get out of God's way and follow the directions you see the promises of God are not just about us the promises that God makes to us are not about us Jill the covenant that God makes with us, are not, it's not about us. It's not about what we can do and what we can have and where we can go. But it's about making a way out of no way for the next generation and the next generation and the next generation and the next generation and the next generation. It's about having a place to worship for those who have not yet met Jesus. It's about making a way for the babies who are in children's church and for their children and their children and their children and their children. We got to get out of our own way, Jana, so that Mira might know Jesus when she's your age. And that her children and her grandchildren might have a place to realize the promised land for generations to come. So Natalie, when we're making decisions in SPRC, <laughs> can't be about us. When we're making decisions in our Sunday school classes and about worship and about the building and about everything that's going on around here, about finances and all that, it can't be about what we want. It can't be about what we need right now. But it has to be about the generations to come. You can keep wandering around in the wilderness for 40 years if you want to. But I'm not here for that. I'm a promised land kind of girl, Miss Ruth. So let's get on that one-way street. Let's get on that one-way street with God. Walk in the covenant life that God has promised. And move forward in our future with hope. Are you ready? Are you ready? Are you ready? I invite you to this altar rail this morning to ratify that covenant with God. To say that you will get out of your own way and we will get out of each other's way together and move forward on this one-way street with God. I invite you into a new season in your life and in the life of this church so that we might live into the covenant that was given generations ago for us and that will last for generations for everybody else. You're invited. Won't you come? Stand and let's sing together hymn 724. Ah. Uh -huh. 
We're bound for the promised land. Yeah. Friends, we are bound for the promised land. Yeah. Yeah. Friends, we are bound for the promised land, yeah. and that is good news. Yeah. Now, one-way streets are dangerous, but they always get us to our destination. So go from this place and not from the presence of the Almighty God, knowing that you know, that you know, that you know who your God is, that you are loved and adored. And go tell somebody else about it. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, we pray. Amen. Amen.